you've been watching my channel, you know that I've been working on my office quite a bit and I decided that it's time for me to do a desk slash home office tour and show everyone what are some of the things that I have on my desk at all times. I'm gonna go over the peripherals that I use. I'm gonna go over some of the knickknacks that I keep at my desk, some of the tools that I use for productivity. I'm gonna make sure to show pretty much everything that I use on a regular basis in order for me to stay productive and get work done as a software developer. And then I'm gonna go into detail on most of the items. I'm also planning on doing videos specific to a lot of these items that I really like and that I really wanna endorse in other videos. I already have a video on the monitor. I'm planning to do a video on this chair. I'm also getting a Secret Labs chair that should be here tomorrow and I'm gonna compare this Ergo Chair 2 from Autonomous with the Secret Lab Titan Chair, and I'm gonna be doing a bunch of videos on gear, but if you're interested in any of the gear that you do see in this video, I'll have affiliate links in the description below. If you decide to use those links, I will receive a small commission through Amazon at no extra charge to you. It'll help support the channel, so check out some of that stuff if you'd like, but let's get right into it and let's just look at everything I have in this office right now. Okay, so my desk was one of the first things that I put together in my office. I wanted a nice large desk and I was having trouble finding one under 400 bucks that you know was large enough to accommodate what I was looking for. And I ended up finding a base on Amazon. This one's made by Fazebo. They're actually the same company that makes my balance board, which I'll talk about a, more a little bit later. But um, there's multiple bases that you could find on Amazon if you're looking for building your own standing desk with finding a base and then finding a countertop. Ikea offers a lot of options for countertops, but I found that they were a little bit more pricey for their real wood countertops. So I decided to just go with Home Depot and I found a butcher block countertop, which was natural unstained wood. And what I did was I bought some stain that would match the color that I was looking for to kind of match the floor. And at the time it was actually to match the background that I had where my Einstein painting was hanging up at. And I stained it myself. I basically just took this base that cost uh, a couple hundred bucks and I drilled everything in underneath you can see some of the cable management that I use and those are just cable management baskets so I don't have a bunch of stuff just hanging around you can also see that there's this sleeve that I wrap the cables that are coming down from the baskets to my desktop and my power outlets there underneath my desk I have an insert wall heater and I didn't insert it when I redid the office because I honestly wasn't sure if I wanted it and now it's been sitting under my desk for a while and I actually really like it. It keeps me nice and toasty. On top of that, you're going to see my work computer. I don't care much about my work computer um, and I don't use it other than for work. So it just kind of sits there and then I run a cable up to my monitor from there. I have an old cheap sound bar that I had for a long time and I was like, ah, I might as well just throw it in here. I. I'm not big on music or audio, so I don't plan on, you know, getting some really high end speakers anytime soon, but it is nice to be able to connect my Bluetooth to that and then just listen to some tunes. I have my desktop computer here, which was a, a PC that I built a few years back and then I stopped using it for a while and then recently I upgraded the video card on it because I plan on streaming a little bit more and OBS works best with uh, Nvidia video cards. I have two cheap plastic containers that I got for the time being because I found that many of the cabinets and drawers that I was finding online were pretty much all the same and they're those like block square Ikea ones that everyone has. And I didn't wanna spend a hundred bucks on each one of those. So I found these for like 30 bucks each, which they get the job done. I like to keep my desk clean, like I mentioned earlier, and I don't like a lot of stuff on my desk, but Inside those drawers is all my junk that I throw in there. So I'm definitely not gonna open those up for this video, but I do keep them there just so I can toss stuff in them. As far as my balance board and my ergonomic setup for when I am standing at my desk, I use that Fazebo balance board, which doesn't really engage too much of your core or anything like that, but it is nice to be able to wobble back and forth and you know kind of not feel like you're standing in one place underneath that i have this ergo driven mat which is kind of nice it has this big lump in the center which you kind of roll your feet on and it's got these 
these spots on the front where you can kind of stand on your toes and, and do some calf raises and whatnot. And then it has this, this strange divot, which I'm, I'm assuming is for your heel. When I use it, I kind of put my heel in there. And it's, I found it better than the old flat mat that I had. I had just like a regular kangaroo mat. I'll also list that. An anti-fatigue mat is almost necessary when you have a standing desk because standing on the hard floor ends up taking a toll on your legs and actually making you more tired and it doesn't feel good when you stand. So I got, I upgraded my anti-fatigue mat along with the balance board that I, that I decided to pick up when I upgraded my office. I was like, oh, I need a new anti-fatigue mat and decided to upgrade. This thing is spendy. This thing's a hundred dollars. I, looking back now, I, I don't know if I would make the same purchase. I have a foam roller and a couple uh, hard uh, balls that I use to roll my back and my neck sometimes. And honestly, you could put those on the ground and roll your feet on them and probably get a better effect than what this mat offers. But I'm kind of committed to it now and I've owned it for this long and I don't think Amazon is gonna accept the return after my nasty feet have been all over it. On top of my desk, you're gonna see some of the productivity tools that I mentioned. I have a couple analog Pomodoro timers here. The big one is 30 minutes, the little one is five minutes. I like using those to kind of use a Pomodoro technique for when I'm trying to focus and whatnot. If you're not familiar with the Pomodoro technique, it's pretty cool. It's also a good first project if you're looking for first projects and you're a developer uh, to build your own Pomodoro timer. I did that when I was learning how to code. And then I have a productivity killer here, which is my Xbox. I don't get to play it as much, but of course I'm gonna have my Xbox at my desk because why not? Next to that, I'm gonna have my little rubber ducky that I use to talk to. That's from the Pragmatic Programmer. It's really good to vocalize and talk out your problems sometimes when you're stuck on coding problems. You'll, you'll hear the rubber ducky technique used often and many times when you just explain your problem to someone, even if it's a rubber duck, you, uh, you kind of figure out what your problem is in the process of explaining it. Here I have a little notebook, it's a dotted notebook. I just jot down all my junk in there. I prefer writing notes down manually. I do end up keeping them in Google Keep and other note taking apps, but when I have something on the spot that I need to write down, I just jot it down in this quick notebook and then I, I clean them up later if I want to have notes for long-term stuff that won't last in a notebook. Next to the rubber ducky is a Rubik's cube. I decided to pick that thing up and I've been trying to solve it and I've only gotten to the point of being able to solve the bottom row and half of the rest and I'm just stuck on the top row. But I think it's fun in between coding and when my code's compiling or if I just kind of need a quick break but I don't want to look at my phone. It, it's a good way to distract me and fidget with something when I have a little bit of downtime. Next to all that stuff, you're gonna see my Sennheiser uh, headphones. They're actually, uh, they were originally like 200 bucks or 180 bucks, but they're an older model. They're Bluetooth headphones, noise canceling, and I got them for like 80 bucks. The newer model is, is still around $200. This brand makes really good headphones. And I highly recommend noise canceling headphones because it's just really nice to kind of not have to hear any background noise or put on some music and just get in the zone. Uh, uh, next to that, I got my little GoPro and my, my lenses for my cameras. Nothing fancy. Honestly, I kind of put them on there just to, just to have some, some tabletop knickknacks and I think it kind of looks cool. He's Groot little plant holder that I picked up for uh, for my desk. Actually, someone gave it to my wife and then I stole it from her because I was like, that's gonna look way better in my office and I believe it does. Behind that is my MacBook Pro. I have a pretty much an entry level MacBook Pro. Nothing too fancy, uh, kind of minimum, minimum hard drive space and it's I think a 2017 or 2018, that's about the time that I got it. And that, that's what I use as my personal computer. Right here is my Blue Yeti microphone. That's what I use now uh, in many of my videos. I'm using my Rode Video Micro on my camera right now to do this video because I decided to go handheld to show my desk. But that is an awesome microphone. If you're getting into streaming, if you want a high quality mic, I highly recommend that mic. I'm also gonna be listing that below. I'm gonna list everything below. Here we have my monster of a monitor. It's a Samsung Odyssey G9. I made a whole video on it, unboxing it, and giving kind of my one month review. I put it right on my desk. 
many people in that video were giving me a hard time because I said I couldn't find a monitor arm for it. And they have corrected me on that because as soon as you say something incorrect on the internet, you're gonna have a bunch of people correcting you. So watch what you say on the internet. Behind that is some wall art. All this stuff I kind of found on Amazon. I have an LED strip on the back of my desk that's taped onto it just because everybody needs some RGB in their, uh, in their office these days. And sometimes I think I'm a little too old for that. Here I have a keyboard tray that I use. I like it because it sets the keyboard at a good spot for me. And I feel like it's more comfortable than having the keyboard on the desk itself. I, when I stand up, it's still, it's still not the right height for me uh, because of the monitor and not having a, a monitor arm. And I don't wanna buy that HX monitor arm that everyone keeps telling me that's like 300 bucks because I already spent a ton of money on this monitor. I have a wrist brace here that's made of uh, solid wood. It's made by Glorious. It's kind of hard to see against the black background, but I'll try to get a little bit closer there to give you a better look. The keyboard, although it's dirty, it's a Keyshawn K2 version two. It's pretty nice. The reason I got that, it's because it's a Bluetooth keyboard that lets you switch between Windows and Mac pretty easily since I have a Windows desktop and a Windows work computer and I have a personal Mac computer. I was able to sync all three of them because there's three Bluetooth connectivity settings for this keyboard and that's kind of how I go back and forth between my different computers. I have the Logitech MX mouse here. I love this mouse. I honestly wish I would have got the black one because I feel that the gray one kind of shows stains a little bit more. And although I feel like I'm a relatively clean individual, this mouse uh, makes me feel differently about that because I do see finger smudges that just don't seem to want to come out. But that is an awesome mouse. I'm really happy that I bought it. It's pretty expensive. It's like a hundred bucks, but it was totally worth the money and I highly recommend it. That also has three Bluetooth settings, which allows you to switch between different uh, devices when, whenever you want to at the press of a button. On the walls, you're gonna see a few foam panels that I have left over from when I picked those up and I first redid my office and was trying to dampen some of the echo that I had in here. I wanted to put some art on my walls. I was gonna do all these hex panels and RGB lights, and I felt like, I don't know, I'm, it's just not my style, so I, I bought you know, different different bits of art that I thought looked pretty cool that were relatively cheap on Amazon. On this side, you'll see there's some astronauts and uh, whatnot on those. And then over here, I have another, another three-piece art set. And behind my desk, I have some a four-piece like galaxy, uh, you know, supernovas or whatever those are, nebulas. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Got a few plants because it's nice to have some greenery in my office. I have this little desk on the side that I keep a little wooden chair next to that I also put a plant and a few books. It's mostly for decoration and to try to fill some of the empty space in the room. The last couple things that I have are actually a few things that I use such as some power block dumbbells. I try to get some reps here and there because I've been very sluggish and not too active since COVID has happened and sitting at a desk all day takes a toll on you. So I have those dumbbells to Try to get a little exercise while I'm at my desk. I also have this foam roller, yoga mat, and yoga block to try to get a little bit of stretching done just so I'm not just stagnant at my desk the whole time. It would be a lie if I told you that I use them all the time, but I do want to use them more often. As far as my chair goes, I picked up the Autonomous Ergo Chair 2. So far, I like it, but I also purchase the Secret Labs Titan, which should be getting here anytime soon. And I plan on doing a review on those two chairs separately. I, I found the Ergo chair to be fairly comfortable. It's often sponsored in a lot of YouTuber videos and many people speak highly of it, but most of those people were doing sponsored videos and they received those chairs for free. So I felt that their opinions were probably a little bit biased and I was very torn between picking up this chair and picking up the Secret Labs chair, so that's why I purchased both. They both seem to have decent return policies, and I'm gonna play Goldilocks, and I'm gonna sit in both chairs until their return period is up and make a decision and then make a video to give people what my opinion was on the two chairs, just to try to help people find the right chair because I was having a hard time deciding between the two, and I thought that would be pretty cool to do. But so far, it's not a bad chair, and you know, if it was a $200 chair, I would say that it's amazing. But the fact that it was closer to $400 after tax and whatnot, 
I feel like it doesn't necessarily feel like a $400 chair, but then again, it's pretty hard to find chairs that are in that price range. So I did show some books at the beginning of the video, and those are programming books, which I highly recommend if you're a software developer, Cracking the Code in Interview, Pragmatic Programmer, Think Like a Programmer, Grokking's Algorithms, and Clean Code are all really good software development books. And one last thing that I didn't show in the video was my whiteboard. I have a whiteboard that I keep in my office, which I use to take notes, and I also use to whiteboard some problems when I'm stuck on stuff and I need to write stuff down, because writing things down when you're stuck on a problem in software development is very helpful. It almost goes hand in hand with talking to that duck. So I do recommend having a whiteboard if you're a software developer or if you're just trying to be productive in general. It's just a really good thing to have in your office. So that's pretty much it. That's everything that I have in this office. And if you stuck around this long, I appreciate it. And I'll also give you a little bonus. You probably noticed that I'm sitting in a secret lab chair and it's not the Ergo 2 chair that I was just going over in the video. It came in and I was able to get it together and I had to shoot the end of this video and I thought why not throw this in as a little bonus for those who stuck around and I just want to give you my first impressions on this chair this secret lab chair is so much better than that ergo 2 I'm gonna make sure to to put together a video comparing the two but it is just a night and day difference I immediately felt how much more comfortable and how much better put together this chair is. I've been sitting in that ergo chair for close to a week now and immediately this chair was just so much better. I, I, I can't even hype it up enough. So just look out for that video. When I do make it, I'll make sure to link it above in this video. And thank you if you stuck around this long. That, that was your little bonus for, for making it all the way through the video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to give this video a like. If you have any questions about the stuff that I talked about in this video, if you want to know anything that I may have left out about a certain product, let me know. I'm also going to be doing more in-depth reviews on a lot of these products. And if there's a certain product in this video that you want to see me do a video on, if I get enough comments on that product, I'll make sure to do a video going over the specific items that viewers want to see. So with all that said, thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more content on learning how to code or gear review or whatever I'm doing now on this channel because I'm not really sure. But if you enjoyed it, subscribe and I'll make sure to try to keep making good content to keep you coming back. With all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.